competitive games. Coach, if you were to say the number one thing, your team's biggest weakness right now, that you will, you know, I, I don't know if you've watched all the game tape from this past weekend, but what's in your mind is the number one weakness of your team right now that you guys know you have to work on before Riverside comes to Well, it's hard to put it as a, it, um, I wouldn't say it's something that we say it's offensively this or defensively that or this person or inside play or perimeter play or assist or turnovers. I would say it, it, it's a more of a global issue, which is being able to, the ability to sustain the game plan and stick with that um, while there's pressure. And pressure can be the team applying pressure. The pressure can be the fact that we are down by five or ahead by ten. The pressure can be that we're playing at home and we, we, you want to win and you want to do well. It's very hard for young men to stay in, um, stay in with the game plan while the excitement level grows. So I think it's just sticking with what we're supposed to do and not what you want to do. And you feel the urge to take that shot. You feel the urge to go for that steal. You feel the urge to you know, play out of a, a position or just drive when your teammate didn't know where you're driving. So I think that it, it's more of a concern of can we continue to develop the poise and the patience and the discipline to stick with the game plan and not just play random. You know, winning, I Steve Chief going to the point that winning is not a 50-50 proposition. You know, we can we can increase the odds towards success as we value the ball, as we take good high percentage shots, and so we look at the, what areas to improve upon. They they kind of come. The, our weaknesses are random in nature. They become a weakness this week over here, that day over here, you know, so they, they kind of pop up in different places. And usually they, they, they come from the lack of uh, attention to the game plan and just breaking out of breaking out of formation. And the receiver turns left and you were going to, hey, wait, the play was supposed to you to break right. Well, I thought I'd go left. You can't just break formation, you know. That basketball has an organization and a flow to it, and your teammate needs to count on you being at a certain place, certain time, and, and uh, continuing with the game plan defensively, offensively, and even, quote-unquote, special teams. You know, how are we running this out-of-bounds play? And that's a special teams formation. How are we getting this last second shot at the end of the half? You know, so we've had examples of issues popping up that have been uh, positive and negative both ways, but... You can't, can't, you know, as we get into January and February, you can't have too many of those mental breakdowns or you lose a game. I know like, your last game you guys had a lot of people in foul trouble, but still, you know, the local kid, Royer, played yeah. 10 minutes. He made two threes, most points. I mean, is he playing himself in the rotation a little more, or was that just because you guys had... Oh, no, he, that, that, uh, his opportunity did not come about foul trouble at all. The guards were in nearly as much foul trouble. Again, it's uh, a situation based upon... Um, where we're at in, in um, a road trip as far as energy goes. In the second night, we thought we needed some energy. Uh, Lorenzo had played 30 minutes the night before. Um, just felt like we could use an opportunity. He's done a good job in practice. You know, we, we like to keep, uh, uh, keep guys that we think they're getting the job done in practice and, and throw them out there and say, hey, you take your shot. You know, you knock them down in practice. Um, and his teammates are getting that confidence with him. He attacked it, and he did the same thing for us at uh, South Dakota State. We picked up a road win there. He gave us some good energy for five minutes, knocked down a key shot for us, brought the bench alive, brought our team alive. We were also playing a very packed-in zone, which plays into uh, Dylan's hand. He's not a, you know, he's not a real uh, quick, long athlete to be an open-court pressuring guy. But he is pretty strong and aggressive, and so when we're playing a, a defense and it gets a team that fits his style, then we can we can use him defensively. And then he played with confidence on the offensive end and knocked down two huge shots for us, which were momentum baskets. So uh, uh, definitely playing himself into it, and what wasn't necessarily a part of, um, uh, you know, oh well, that guy got in foul trouble. It was more, hey, we think we can use him uh, for energy, and he brought energy, and then his offense was a real bonus too, because we know he can knock down shots. Good question.